Uh, today we're going to learn about exponential decay and you guys are going to be doing page 8.3. Uh, students will be able to write a function, complete a table, and sketch a graph of exponential decay. And so, let me tell you a little bit about um, uranium-238. Uranium-238 uh, has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. It's a very interesting uh, element and so I would like for you to explore a little bit about it and learn about it. It's used a lot in, in create bombs and etc. Let's say that a gigantic rock in the Arctic has 1000 kilos of uranium 238. And so how can you create a table with this information? Okay, again, we'll use zero for the initial point and it has 1,000 kilos, right? We're gonna put here kilos. Uh, then, what is the cycle? How often does it have the half-life? Well, it's every 4.5 billions years. So this is in billion, billions, right? Billions of years. And the next one will be 4.5 plus 4.5 will be 9, plus 4.5 will be 13.5, and the next one will be 18. So what's happening, what does it mean when we have half-life? It means that we're going to have half of the matter in there. So it's going to be, if it's 1,000, after 4.5 billion years, we're going to have 500 kilograms. Half of that, nine billions of years later, we'll have 250. Then 125, because it's half of 250 is 125, and half of that is 62.5 kilograms, okay? Now, how would you write the function of that? Again, um, I'm guessing that it's getting easier by looking at the previous assignments. We always have the initial point, right? So this is my initial point, which is 1,000. And I always multiply by the base, which is what's happening from here. Some people say, oh, I'm dividing by two, dividing by two. And that's true, but also, Remember that when we're talking about fractions, dividing by two is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal of two, okay, so it will be the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, meaning you change this two, so times one half. And this says it itself. Okay, so half life, it means you have one half of what you had before, okay? So dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. And from here to here, you're multiplying by one half. And you're multiplying by one half and so on. Okay, so my base here is gonna be one half. What is the exponent in here for my function? Well, it's gonna be the cycle, right? It's always this input, which is x over the cycle which is every 4.5 billion years. That will be my function. If we were asked to sketch the graph, then this is how it would look. I put my x in here and I have to be careful. Remember that I have to look at the cycle. We start with zero, then we have every 4.5 so 9, 13.5. So we wouldn't go by 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? It would be the input that we have in here or the cycle, basically. And the initial point is 1,000. We're going to go all the way to the top. And then what happens after that? Oh, the next, let's say that 4.5 billion years goes by. Now I don't have 1,000. I'm going to have half of that. So right there. Another 4.5 uh, billion years goes by. I don't have the 500 anymore, but half of that and half, it's like, you know, uh, the sketch 
would be about approximately at half, which is 250, and that's with nine. And then the next one, I have half of that, which is 125. So 125 goes here, and then half of that, which is about here, and then half of that, and half of that, etc., etc. So I'm just gonna sketch it right here. So this would be my sketch. And remember, supposedly this never goes on to zero, although atoms do uh, disappear, and so it converges towards zero. Okay. Uh, this would be years in billions, right? And this would be the kilos left after a certain period. Now a student asked me, what happens if I want, I don't want to know at 4.5 or at 9? And that's something that we're going to be looking at. How do I figure other points? Because I'm not going to leave that long. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but you know, what? how do I figure out this? And we'll come back to that. Okay. In a small town, there are 3,072 people. Every 10 years, one-fourth of the people leave, either to better life or to another place. But that's what happens. Every decade, every 10 years, one-fourth of the people leave. So how would the function look for that? What will be the initial point? Well, the people that we have right now, which is 3,072. And then what's happening? One fourth of the people leave. What does that mean? How many people do I have left in town? That will be three fourths. Okay, and how often does that happen? I'm gonna put X over every 10 years. Remember, this is the initial point. This is my, my base. So what happens after 10 years? I have three-fourths of the people left. After another 10 years, I have three-fourths of that those people left in here, and so on. And that happens every 10 years, okay? That's the cycle. So for my table, I start with the 3,072 people. Now I have my calculator in here because I'm gonna show you what we can do to make it easier for us. Uh, what you can do is, multiply 3072 and we're going to multiply by this fraction and you can do it either either with a, as a fraction or as a decimal so you can say 3072 times you open parentheses and then you put 3 divided by 4 close your parentheses that's your decimal right there so if you don't feel comfortable by opening parentheses, you can just multiply by 0.75. Close parentheses and then put equal. That's the people who are left in that town after 10 years. So it's going to be 2,304. Okay. And then again, I either multiply by 0.75 or... I multiply by three fourths, okay? Times 0.75 equals 1,728. Again, the next 10 year after 10 years, times 0.75, which is 1,296, times 0.75, which is 972, times 0.75 and that's 720 and can continue on and on and on okay again how do I get this you can first figure it out and I'll show you because right now it came out by by putting the parentheses but all you have to do when you're converting a fraction to a decimal you just put the the numerator divided by the number denominator equals again numerator divided by denominator equals and that gives you the equivalency in decimal form
Okay. Now, how do I graph this? Again, my cycle is going to be every 10 years. So I have to make sure that I draw that. Um, and here it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc., etc. Okay. You can go on and on and on. And I'm going to start at 372. And then this is 3 fourths. So it's not half like before that I would just put my dot in there, right? This is my initial point. It's actually three fourths. So it's if this is one whole, this is half. So I need the one half plus half of the other half. So that will be the 2,304. So that's where three fourths will be. Basically, I just divided this into four equal parts, right? And then, again, half of that will be about here, but half of that will be in here, and that's where my three-fourths of this new number is. So about here. And so we're going to put 17, 28 in here. And half of that will be about here, and half of the half makes it three-fourths this will be the three-fourths so about here which is 1296 so my line will be about here and then again three-fourths which is the 972 about there and then again about here 729 Okay, and about three-fourths of that would be about here, and so on. And so my sketch would be like this. Whoops. That's sketchy. Okay, and so we'll continue and continue and continue and continue until it converges to zero. Okay, thank you so much, and I hope this video helps you. Goodbye.